Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we're going to be looking at deductions and losses, and specifically, we're going to be looking at timing of expense recognition and disallowed deductions. Now, this session, we all I always have fun in, in the classroom when we cover this session, and you will see why. Um, this, this topic is covered in an income tax course on the CPA exam regulation, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you to please connect with me, especially on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I post my lectures as well as other news-related uh, uh, topics. If you're a Facebook user, like my Facebook page, and you can connect with me on a personal level. If you are not subscribed to my YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube, like my videos, share them so other people will benefit. I do have a Twitter account, not that active, and also you can access some of my lectures on my website. Time of expense recognition. Now we're gonna keep for this course because it's an individual income tax course, we're gonna keep it simple. What I mean by simple, we're gonna be using the cash basis. What does that mean? It means if we're using the cash basis, we're gonna be deducting expenses when we pay them. Now that's not always the case, but generally speaking, generally speaking, that's the case. Now we're gonna later on look at more specific, especially when we get to the corporate income tax portion of the course. However, when we talk about depreciation, depreciation is a non-cash expense, and don't worry, we're gonna cover depreciation in detail. So that's all what I'm gonna talk about in regards to timing of expense recognition, because we're assuming here we're using the cash basis. Now the next topic we're gonna to look at is non-deductible possibilities. So what are those? Those are, those are deduc deductions that they are not allowed, or they are allowed but uh, some students find them very interesting. Let's put it that way. First, illegal payments. Well, illegal payments, um, guess what? Are they necessary? No, they're not necessary. Uh, they're, are they in the ordinary course of business? I don't think so. So illegal payment are not necessary. Therefore, I don't have to say it, not deductible, okay? What about legal fees? There should be legal fees, legal fees. Legal fees, when are they deductible? If they are business expense, so basically you are defending yourself, or income producing. So basically those legal fees are to protect your business. Under those circumstances, they are deductible. What about illegal business activities? Okay, what if you are conducting an illegal business activity? Well, guess what? Operating expenses are deductible. Operating expenses are deductible. Although the business is illegal, okay, you might be a bookie, you might be having uh, poker machines, whatever your illegal business is, but they are, um, they are, uh, the operating expenses are deductible. Now, if you are making a legal payment to police officers as bribes, kickbacks to politicians, those are not deductible. Although you are running an illegal business, it's okay to up to, it's not okay, but I'm saying it's, it's allowable by the IRS and Congress to deduct your operating expenses, but if you are you know, bribing the cops, you cannot put that down on the books as an expense, okay? What about if you're a drug dealer? This is this is a an illegal a, a, a business on its own. So if you're a drug dealer, if you have operating expenses, I'm sorry, you cannot deduct operating expenses. So drug dealer specifically, you cannot operate. That's, that's interesting. Just think about what type of operating expenses you would have. Um, Okay, but you cannot have, have you cannot deduct them. However, IRS allows you to deduct your cost of goods sold. So your cost of goods sold, whatever product you bought, uh, believe it or not, it's deductible. Okay, the product that you bought because you invested the money. But you know, uh, vehicle expense, you know, operate transportation expense, uh, guns, anything like that uh, to operate your business, that's not uh, that's not deductible. Or, for example, employee, <laughs> having employees or contractors, that's not going to be deductible as a drug dealer. Uh, political contributions, obviously, that's non-deductible. And the reason is if they allow them, the, the, uh, the assumption is, is you will have rich people or people with financial power uh, controlling the politician. But again, you know make your own judgment about our, our political system. But generally, not generally speaking, political contribution, they are not deductible, okay? Just they don't want to encourage you, okay? Now, let's take a look at an example, uh, just so we can kind of go over these additional examples, just to make sure we cover as much as possible on our basis. Let's take a look at the first question. And the question read, Finn incurred and paid the following expenses during 2018, 2018. 
$50 for tickets for running a red light while he was commuting to work. Uh, you might be saying, oh, I, need, I need to get to work. Well, was that necessary? No. And also you're commuting. It's not even part of your business most probably. Therefore, I'm sorry, not, not deductible. Okay. Um, 100 ticket for parking and handicapped parking space. Well, that's not really nice, but uh, that's, that's illegal and you should not be parking there. Therefore, it's not deductible. Okay, now $200 to an attorney to represent you in a traffic court as to two tickets above. So now you'd hire an attorney. Can you deduct this? That's a legal fees. Now you cannot deduct this. It's not, it's not a business expense. Now $500 to an attorney to draft an agreement with a tenant for one year lease on an apartment than Finn owns. Now you own an apartment and what you did, you are going to, um, you ask a lawyer to draft a lease for you. I used to have a rental property, I used to have a standard lease, so it's easy to buy a standard lease. Um, but yes, uh, this is a business expense, therefore it is deductible. It is deductible. You paid $1,000 to an attorney to negotiate a reduction in the child support payment. So you paid $1,000 to an attorney, but now to reduce your child support payment. If you know, if we know from chapter four or five, I don't know which one, four or five, the one we talked about income exclusion, child support is not taxable. Therefore, this is strictly personal item. Therefore, it's not deductible. You cannot use it. Okay. 2,500 to an attorney to negotiate a reduction in his, in his qualified alimony payment to a former spouse. Here, um, well, for one thing, this is going to go away because we're no longer having alimony payment. Actually, this, we shouldn't even cover this because going forward, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, but um, this is debatable because alimony used to be taxable and deductible. So they use, it was, it was a gray area, but you could have, you could have. But again, we don't have to worry about this because alimony payment are no longer deductible, no longer taxable. So we can forget about this. But this area is kind of, it used to be a gray area, gray area. Let's take a look at this. Um, Trevor, a friend of yours from high school, works as a server as, at the ST Cafe. He asks you to help him prepare his federal income tax return. When you inquire about why his bank deposits substantially exceed his step income, he can. He told you, he confides to you that he is a bookie on the side. That's interesting. Trevor then provides you with the following documented income ex expenses for the year. Now, let me tell you this. Uh, from, you know, generally speaking, you don't want to associate yourself with unethical people, especially as an accountant. Um, you don't want to subject your ethics to anything. You don't want to compromise your ethics. Um, and I'll tell you right now, if you fight, if you face this type of situation in the real world, walk away, whether it's a friend, relative, especially a relative, because I do have my own experience with a relative. I happen to be the accountant of a relative who happens to be convicted in the 80s but for a bank crime bank crime bank it's a part of the savings and loan he then he did not really steal a bank with a gun he steal a bank you know in a different way part of the savings and loan and i thought as a you know that was in the 80s you know, i was like i was a kid but i thought well you know he's a relative um not very close relative but a distant relative it's like yeah why not i you know but i was always suspicious then something happened and uh, you know i can't say what happened but the point is is um, stay away from unethical people. That, 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 that's that's the moral of the story, okay? Uh, that's the moral of the story. So let's go back here. Uh, will these items affect uh, Trevor's adjusted gross income? Okay, ignore the impact of self-employment taxes. We will ignore the impact, okay. Tip income. Can we include the tip income? Can we include the tip income? And the answer is, of course, the tip income. Gambling income from his bookie on the side Guess what? It's also included. So we do include the income. Okay. Gambling expenses pay out to winners. Well, guess what? This is part of business, basically operating the business. Remember, if you're operating a business, although it's illegal, as long as it's not drug drug dealer, he's not a drug dealer, he's just a gambler. I'm not sure which one is worse, but uh, that's your call. Um, <laughs> uh, pay out to winners, 29,000. I'll, I'll take this back. Um, uh, so 29,000, that's deductible. Those are taxable. Employee compensation. Yes, that's also operating expenses. 
that's deductible, okay? A bribe to police officer who's aware of Trevor's bookie activity. And, and that's why you don't want to get involved with this because there we go. Now you're, you're having police officers involved where they are being bribed and you're aware of it. So you might find yourself in the newspaper testifying one day of not saying something because, you know, you, you know, as an accountant, especially as a bookkeeper, you have no confidentiality privilege. If, if you're a tax preparer, you have absolutely no confidentiality privilege between you and the client. So that's why you ought to be very careful. You're not an auditor here. You are just a, a, tax, a tax preparer. So knowing about this, especially knowing the police officer's name or anything like this, you're going to be in trouble down the road. So simply put, what's going to happen, we're going to include all this 68,000. And if, if you decide to complete uh, Trevor's return, minus 37,000. And what's going to happen? Trevor will find someone to complete his taxes. Don't worry. He'll pay enough money to do it. Um, that's that uh, for this session. If you have any questions, any comments, if you are studying for your CPA exam, study hard, it's worth it. If you happen to go to my website and uh, to view more lectures, by all means, please consider donating. Thank you. And